Is it ever useful to follow current trends? If everyone is doing something or is holding to certain ideas, does it make sense to follow suit? And it may actually depend upon who's in line in front of you. For example, if you go back to the 1980s, let's imagine 1980, the year 1980, and Try to picture people living in uh, Soviet Russia, let's say in the city of Kiev in 1980, and ask yourself, do you think that any people living in Kiev would have liked to, if possible, move to New York City? And I would imagine that probably a large number of people would have loved the possibility of moving from Kiev to New York City. Kiev back then and much of Soviet Russia um, there really wasn't a lot that they had. Often stores were empty. Um, you know, sometimes you saw a line outside of a store. People lined up simply because they saw someone waiting in line and they thought maybe there'd be something to buy in the store. But it was tough times there. And in the 1980s, the United States was very prosperous. And I would imagine that people would have loved to have had the opportunity of moving from Kiev to New York City. I suspect that very few people, if any, people in New York City were dying to be able to move to Kiev. And I think that that analogy uh, is significant because you see that you can gauge uh, really the quality of life in these cities by looking at where the flow is going. Where do people really prefer to live? Now, if we imagine the conversion trends let's say in North America, uh, between Jews moving towards Christianity and Christians moving towards Judaism. So I think that all of the indicators would lead us to believe that you'd find a massive movement of Jews toward Christianity. Why is that? Well, number one, just the numbers. You have literally in North America a culture where the ambient culture is Christian. Everyone around us is Christian. The messaging, uh, holiday time, the television shows that we see. You know, we're not seeing television shows that are showing us Zoroastrianism or Buddhism or other religions of the world. Just about everything we see in North America is Christian. And we have literally hundreds of millions of Christians living in North America, whereas the Jewish people are a very tiny minority, maybe five, six million people at tops. And so normally, psychologically, a minority tends to be influenced by the majority. So one reason, one factor that would indicate that we would expect that the movement would be from Judaism to Christianity is simply because of the power and the force of numbers. Secondly, we know that Christians have a massive effort underway to convert Jews. There were literally hundreds of missionary organizations, uh, messianic synagogues, and other uh, movements in North America that are specifically targeting the Jewish community for conversion. So we would expect that with this massive effort that is directed towards persuading Jews to embrace Christianity, that would be another factor uh, that would lead us to expect that you'd find a lot of movement from Judaism to Christianity, and third, that the conversion process is relatively simple, meaning that it's not really that difficult to convert to Christianity. All a person needs to do is make a, a profession of faith. That's really all there is to it. And uh, in some denominations, there may, they may seal the deal by having a baptism of some flavor, of some sort. But when we look at the flip side, would we expect Christians to be leaving Christianity and embracing Judaism. So these three factors would really mitigate against that. Number one, the Jewish community doesn't really have any numbers that by sheer force of number we would, in, we would attract Christians or have any kind of influence over, over them because of our sheer numbers. Secondly, there is no effort by the Jewish community, zero, to try to convert Christians. There aren't dozens or hundreds of Jewish organizations 
that are all over North America, the internet and, uh, you know, on street corners and, you know, with a massive operation to try and encourage Christians to embrace Judaism. As a matter of fact, the opposite is true. We discourage people from converting. And third, conversion itself to Judaism is extremely difficult. It's not simple. You just can't uh, announce that you want to be a Jew and that's the end of the story. Conversion requires a year or two of, of very intense study. It requires that a prospective convert accept upon themselves the obligation of observing all the commandments of the Torah, including for male circumcision, etc. And you can see why, just if you look at these three factors alone, you really wouldn't expect much movement from Christianity towards Judaism, but we would expect a tremendous amount of movement of Jews towards Christianity. Now, if we eliminate from this thought experiment people that are converting for the sake of marriage, and if we eliminate from this thought experiment people that are converting without having really made an informed decision, meaning that we're not going to include, let's say, people who never really practiced their former religion, never really knew much about it, were not serious students of the Bible, so we'll leave those people out of the mix. And we're going to look at the trends among people who are deeply committed to their religion and have practiced it intensely, have studied it intensely. You'd call serious practitioners, serious students, even leaders and clergy people of those religions. And what's fascinating is that we find a tremendous movement today, and it's growing, of serious Bible-believing Christians who've spent decades of their lives immersed in Christianity, very serious students of the Bible that are moving towards and embracing Judaism. On the other hand, it is almost impossible to find a serious Torah-educated Jew who grew up for decades committed and dedicated to observing Judaism, practicing Judaism, that ends up leaving Judaism and embracing Christianity. You'll find today numerous Christian clergy, former clergy people, teachers, uh, leaders in the Christian world who have now embraced Judaism, you will never find a rabbi today. You're not going to find rabbis today that are now uh, embracing Christianity. So the question I'm going to pose is, is this kind of trend significant? Is this kind of flow significant? And you have to decide.